Hi, I'm Alex, and welcome to 52 Miniatures. What if you don't like it? That miniature that's supposed to go in your army. Tabletop wargames can be a fickle thing. How issues are handled is personal. Some players are dead set on the fact that one must play with a proper, certified, company-specific miniature. Others think the former are a bit conservative and instead play with anything they think looks good. I'm half and half. I play the Stormcast faction for Games Workshop's tabletop wargame Age of Sigma, fantasy wargaming. And I enjoy buying Games Workshop miniatures, it's part of the deal if you see what I mean. Going into a game store and buying a box for my faction is part of the hobby for me. On the other hand, I have as of late realized that if I don't like the sculpt, the miniature itself, then it does not get painted. I need to have something that I like the look of to get inspired to paint. My new army list requires crossbowmen, aka castigators. Well, crossbow is, uh, I don't know, they've got something that looks like a crossbow but appears to shoot a holy hand grenade or something. No, Lord, bless this thy hand grenade, that with it thou mayst blow thy enemies to tiny bits. Probably propelled by sheer religious fanaticism. The crossbow, apart from that it's the wrong way around, is the only thing I like about these miniatures. They're just too bulky. The stance is, I don't know, like a glam metal band guitarist shooting fireworks from the guitar. Nothing wrong with that per se, but on a battlefield maybe one should put more attention onto the aiming bit. Now these things can happen. There's nothing in the world wrong with the miniature. A lot of people would probably think it's great. This is just my personal taste deciding. And so, what does one do? I need them in my army. Some would say, stop complaining and start playing the game. Others say, stop complaining and use different minis. Well, I say, stop complaining and kit bash. Something that occurred to me a little while back when I got my first 3D printer is that I now have a bits-making machine. I don't even necessarily have to like an entire sculpt. I can print it for bits. And so when I, for some reason, was browsing the One Page Rules site for miniatures, I think it was probably Luke from Geek Gaming Scenic's fault. He'd just painted a few miniatures from there in a video. But that kind of goes for most miniatures ever made, the rate he paints armies at. Anyway, I stumbled upon these medieval, Venetian, Geonesian, steampunkish fantasy folk. There's an entire army of the stuff. But it was the snipers that caught my eye. Two reasons. Apart from that they are actually cool sculpts, I like the fact that they at least seem to be aiming at something. Also, I like that they're hiding behind shields or pavises, if we're going to be on point. I'm doing my Owlcast army, and I'm constantly trying to find ways to get my custom-made shields, uh, sculpted by Sin Nerds Andy, onto the miniatures. This would be the perfect way of getting my owl shields onto my crossbowmen. Okay, three reasons. The backpacks. Why don't fantasy warriors, regardless of faction, bring stuff with them when out, pillaging and causing general sword fueled ruckus? Don't they eat? These one-page rules snipers even have a sleeping roll with them. I mean, I'd rather have well-fed and rested soldiers in my army. Just saying. My first mission was to get the scale right. Stormcast are big folk, superhumans as a matter of fact. A lot bigger than the Venetian snipers. And it was a bit tricky. Armour can vary so much, sculpts too, apparently. The castigators don't actually seem to have stomachs. Very long legs that lead straight onto the chest area. Also, pretty small helmets compared to the pretty large one-page rules helmets. After doing a couple of test prints, I found that looking at hands and feet was one of the best ways to try and size match. In the end, I printed everything at 118%. Maybe that's how much larger a Stormcast is than someone like me. It would, in that case, make them roughly 220 centimeters. Next came the complicated bit that actually didn't turn out all too complicated. I figured I might as well start kit bashing in the box. Although knowing nothing about 3D sculpting, opening the program Blender up makes me cringe like Quasimodo in daylight 
Or maybe that was Nosferatu. I can't remember. I settled, in the end, for a program called Mesh Mixer, and very rudimentary started to chop heads off. There wasn't only the heads, though. I wanted to make room for some shoulder pads, something a bit more stormcasty. So after the heads, I shaved off some shoulder pads. The most tricky was the one sculpt where the sniper holds the shield with its hand. I had to remove the hand from the original shield and put it onto one of my owl shields. How I did that is shrouded in mystery, but it got done. My patron, Isak, in Stockholm for the day for a visit, helped me assemble the now headless and shoulderless snipers. Thank you for that, Isak, and thank you all patrons for your kind gifts. Now the next step was to make these edited 3D printed miniatures look slightly more like what they are to replace. I need things to remind people of the fact that these are Stormcast. Helmets will be a must, but also shoulder pads. Preferably the same shoulder pads as the rest of the army. Problem is, I don't really have any to spare. And so, out came the blue stuff. Blue stuff is a magic substance. This, specifically bought from Green Stuff World. Placed in hot water, as in right out of the kettle hot, and the blue stuff goes all soft and rubbery. One can press anything into it, and once it's cooled, pull out the bit, and hey presto, one has a mold of sorts. I poured liquid resin into the mold, cured, and out comes a shoulder pad copy. Kind of a little rough around the edges, but with a bit of cleanup, it'll be good enough for me. Even better than the original if one likes a bit of a war-torn look. The blue stuff mold does not really hold shape well, so I had to repeat the process six times. Yeah, that's how many minis we're doing. Two squads of three. The most important thing here is, of course, the crossbow. The one-page rules version is very snipery and has no holy hand grenade at the front. There is, of course, a simple way of solving that. Using the original. This is one of the scary things about kit bashing. Minis are going to end up ruined if you decide to cut them to bits. I guess there is a level of dedication that decides, but also miniature worth based on sentiment and actual worth. These castigators are not miniatures I enjoy. There is an awesome looking hero, but that I've already painted and gifted away. Also because these feature in starter boxes makes them very common, cheap, used eBay rescue type miniatures. Chopping them to bits does not bother me. The heads did not all fit exceptionally into my digital beheaded holes. Something a little green stuff sorted out nicely. Also, the owl shields did not totally fit the setting either. The shield shape was not as long as the one-page rules original, but that was easily fixed by altering the terrain instead of the model itself. Creating a little patch of elevation not only solved the problem, but made the bases look more interesting. I used cork bark as rock structures, or sometimes 3D printed bits for this. Oh, and I had a live stream in the middle of all this. Please do check in for my live streams if you can. It's always nice to have a bit of a hobby hangout chat. I do them as regularly as I can, which means every other week or at least once a month. Okay, I realized I wanted to use a lot of heads and not helmets. It's a bit of a theme for my army, but I like the personality look of faces rather than the uniform of helmets. These specific heads are from Anvil Industries. Anvil Industries not only make some of the, to me, best resin bits and miniatures around, their digital forge, that's where they sell STL files for your 3D printer, has some great stuff. These heads, for example. Also, if you're into Stargrave or something, their Alien Bounty Hunter bundle looks like the stuff of dreams. Sorry, sidestepping here. Back to my Stormcast. Because of not using helmets so much, I needed more original Stormcast regalia to make them look like Stormcast. Some ornamental shoulder pads for the squad leaders. Yeah, that's a big shoulder pad. Some extra ammunition. Helmets, but not on the head. I mean, if one wants to try and see anything to aim and all that, I'd take my helmet off too. And I mean, these helmets are iconic. They go a long way in convincing someone of what faction these miniatures are. Little Stormcast purse thingy. Some Stormcast uh, rope and anchor thing. One of these things. Cathedral jewellery type thing. Uh, mind your fingers. 
some more Stormcast jewelry. I also added some 3D printed basing bits. This hasn't got anything to do with the kit bash, but to be able to print this kind of stuff is great. So many bits to be had. And if you're wondering about the cobblestone bases, it's a green stuff world rolling pin called small bricks that I'm using on all my bases for this army. Similar style bases can be a great way to tie an army together, but I believe I've even done a video on the subject. And the miniatures were done. Well, sort of. They got painted, too. But painting these, I kind of discovered a, for me, new, interesting workflow. And so that will have to be another video. Maybe even the next one. What I seem unintentionally to have created, to my eye, is the death corpse of Krieg, of fantasy, wargaming. It's probably just the backpacks, but I love it. This is exactly why I like to kitbash, replacing miniatures I'm personally not too fond of with something that I adore. They're the same thing, yet something completely different. And besides, now the crossbows are on the right way around. After all the layers of paint, I cannot tell the difference between what is an original Games Workshop plastic or what is 3D printed on my frozen Sonic Mini 8K be it from the one-page rules or Anvil Industries. This goes to show how far 3D printing has come and it just opens up so many possibilities for kit bashing, even 3D kit bashing, for those set to learn the software. As a side note, this video is not sponsored by any of the often mentioned companies I paid for the one-page rules files myself. Or, well, technically that would be my patrons who brought the cash. But I'm just trying to endorse the good things I find along the way on my hobby journey. Thank you for watching this video. Please check out my Patreon, thus supporting further plastic toy soldier beheadings. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye. Okay. Okay.